I, I always introduce myself, even though I know almost, not I actually don't know everybody yet, so I will introduce myself. I'm Mel Hauser, I use she, they pronouns, and I am executive director at All Brains Belong Vermont, and welcome to Brain Club. We are thrilled to launch our first Brain Club of the new year, and let me just share screen. There we go. All right, so New Year's reimagined. All year, all year long, I mean, kind of all year long, but all month long in particular, um, we're gonna be looking at what does life reimagined look like? Because in 2022, um, we talked about how we need some reimagining. So uh, before, we, before we start today's topic, um, by way of uh, orienting you to our community ground rules, our community agreement, all forms of participation are okay here. You can have your video on or off, and even if it's on, we don't expect anything of you. You certainly don't need to look at the camera. Move, eat, stim, do whatever needs doing, and everyone's welcome. You can communicate however you're most comfortable, and in addition to affirming all aspects of identity, we are all about creating a safe, respectful environment, protecting one another's access needs, um, creating space and time for everyone to participate however they're most comfortable. And just as a reminder, this is a, a general education about neurodiversity related topics. Uh, this is, we encourage everyone to access support groups and uh, you know, helping professionals um, and individual traumatic experiences are best processed outside at Brain Club. Last bit of access needs. Closed captioning is enabled. You just need to toggle it on. And depending on your version of Zoom, either the live transcript CC button or the more dot 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 and choose show subtitles. And you can choose hide, hide subtitles if you'd like to turn them off. Okay. So all pretty much most of 2022, we talked about how the default of, hold on, speaking of access needs, I'm gonna make Sarah my co-host because I'm getting distracted. Hang on a second. Oh, there we go. I never remember to do this in time. There you are. Sarah, your co-host to I'm let good. the people in. Welcome everybody. So all of the you know, major so social, you know, societal systems that are not working, not only for the neurodivergent community, but for most people. Um, we've been talking about how in order to do anything for the neurodivergent community, we must do everything, healthcare, employment, education, social connection, just like you know, rehauling all of it. So um, we, really for the, the better part of the past six months, Brain Club has been a lot of variations on the brain rules versus world rules theme. Brain rules being the cultural assumptions, the things we tell ourselves, the things we grew up with, the things we assume are the way that something needs to be, but they're not laws of physics. They're not real world rules. So just because it's always been a certain way doesn't mean it always has to be that way. So unlearning brain rules is what we think is part of reimagining a better life. So, and speaking of reimagining, um, we've got great news that our reimagining what's possible campaign, um, our, uh, our community donor who uh, generously is matching $25,000, we have an extension. Um, so we are 87% of the way there. Once we reach 25,000, it magically becomes 50,000. So we have an extra month for reimagining what's possible. And we start today. So on uh, this weekend on New Year's Eve, uh, many, many, of, many of you were, were with us. Um, we uh, focused on unlearning the brain rules of New Year's resolutions, unlearning the brain rules of like what it means to, you know, New Year, New You. We're, 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 that's uh, how about not new you, but uh, how to become a more authentic you in 2023. So we're gonna, um, today we're going to play a clip from Saturday's presentation. It's a conversation between myself and Amanda Diekman, who is a parenting coach and author of an upcoming book called Low Demand Parenting. And um, what, uh, then we'll have plenty of, plenty of opportunity for discussion. 
But um, some of the themes that you hear about, sorry, um, dust everywhere in my office because I have it because uh, uh, the, the brain rules of like vacuuming this room, like I'm on learning those. Anyway, um, so uh, some of the themes that came up in the New Year's Eve discussion was, was that around like, all right, so what are the systems, what are the routines of my life um, that I, you know, that I, I, I want to say yes to? And what do I want to let go? And um, that can sometimes be really hard to know what are the things that are actually working. And uh, we talked about the idea of, of uh, part of autonomy being that of kind of choosing your challenge, like challenge by choice, not being forced to like, you know, adapt to a situation or to practice a skill or whatever. Um, but, but really this, this is about when I'm ready, if I'm ready, I will, I might choose to, you know, expand my, my existence or not. So I think that since safety does come first, um, it'll, it, it'll be interesting to see as, as for some of you watching us the second time, for some of you the first time, um, you know, how do these themes play out for you and, 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 and what does the new year for you, what does that look like? What, what is a, what, what, what is, what is 2023 going to look like in your reimagined world? So with that, I'm going to stop share and Lizzie's going to share the video. Commonly people are asking themselves and are invited, encouraged, directed to ask themselves, who do I want to become? What you're really saying is flip that on its head and say, who am I? What makes me feel like me? Yes, that. Yes. And that is also thinking about how that supports me as a newly aware autistic person that if we bring in kind of a masking conversation, like New Year's is also a heavy masking time where the mask is really reinforced. And I can see in years past, if I look at old goals, like you were talking about how a lot of your goals were around like continuous, um, like getting more organized. And, um, and oftentimes that process is kind of like trying not to be who you are as an ADHD person. Like, yeah, exactly. Like if I just solve this crazy brain of mine and like fix it, then I'll be like everybody else and I'll be able to do all the things everybody else does, which is a kind of masking. And, you know, true also for PDA, like if I could just get over my resistance and kind of change me on the inside so that I don't feel so radically other. Um, if I could just be more sane, then I can do what everybody else does and fit in and feel good. And so oh, then it creeps up on you. Cause like, yeah. if you say it that way, you're like, yeah, that's not what I want. I want not that. Um, but then like you're in it and you're like, oh, it's happening again. I'm doing a thing again where I wish I weren't resisting. Yeah, exactly. Because it's little stuff. It's like, man, it's, it's, it's hard for me to make a phone call a phone for something that's important because there are so many demands in making these automated phone calls. And so I'm going to avoid it. And it's going to mean that I don't get physical therapy for a couple of years because I need to make a series of phone calls. Right. And, but the new year, new you says like, well, if I could just, if I could just do it, then I'd be fine. But that's also sort of saying like, well, if I wasn't me, I could do it. Holy cow. Right. Anytime you're like, if I could just be a different person, then everything would be fine. Like that is, you're like, that's the first one. You'd be like, dude, you did it again. No, that is a brain rule. So the brain rule of if I could just be a different person, everything would be okay. Like if you use that threshold, mm -hmm. almost always that can filter out like brain rule that is serving you or brain rule that is not. I love that. Yeah. If I could just, is kind of your prompt for, ooh, brain rule. And brain rule that says something's wrong with me, that I need to be different. And 
And if we bring in Kaizen, like what the difference is, what would it sound like to ask instead, who am I and how do I continue on my life's journey towards becoming myself? Then I ask that, okay, I have this hip that needs physical therapy and I'm having a hard time making a phone call. How do, who am I? me having a hard time making a phone call and how do I continue on my life's journey? Well, maybe it's, I ask somebody else to make the phone call for me. <laughs> and right, so I, right. That culture of interdependence, because it's, it's so, so I mean, uh, I need to be independent. I need to quote adult when really you're an adult because you're 18, not because of your executive functioning and hypersensitive neuroception. Um, so, so that like unlearning the brain role of independence embracing a culture of interdependence, knowing that there's like millions of people who cannot make that phone call. And the good thing about neurodiversity is that we all have different brains and there are people who can make that phone call and who, even if they can't make the phone call for themselves, they can make the phone call for you. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like I probably could do it for somebody else. Right. You could make, uh, you could, you, you could, oh, you know, interestingly, um, you could go on my list for the past uh, three months is to call and make a doctor's appointment. You can, you can call my doctor. I can call your physical therapist. It would probably be fine, but I'm never, I know I'm never going to make that call. Uh, so maybe there's another brain rule that we're noticing about new years that says hide, hide your struggles under goals too. Like what if we, if, if we instead just told the truth, like, instead of the goal being go to physical therapy in 2023, if my, if instead I said, I'm struggling with a phone call and that was what the new year represented was like unearthing our struggles in interdependence and trust that somebody can step in like, whoa, then my need gets met and I do get my goal accomplished, but, but out of a whole, you know, in an interdependent system right often yeah. and connection are what's like helpful um even more so than even the medical appointment that i'm not having you know like it's 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 about the 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 the, the more you practice being authentic the more likely you are to keep being authentically you like it, 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 it in, in in the a to b village we call that naming the thing so like all day long, we name the thing and then people are like, oh yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't necessarily have language to describe that, but the fact that it's been named and aired makes me more likely to feel less terrible. Yes. Yes. So we're naming the thing that's holding you back. You're naming the struggle and in trust and honesty and that then what comes to you could be support and connection and out of support and connection we can accomplish our goals but not out of shaming and masking and you know pie in the sky goal setting in the absence of support like access needs what if new year's was about naming our difficulty getting access to the things that we really need Right, because when you like like when you name, I can't, I haven't, I haven't made the phone call for for two years, and I have not made this particular phone call. I mean, like we're currently, it's basically like, yeah, it's it's been many years, but like you know, maybe I finally make the call for someone else, and while I'm on the phone, I happen to make a medical appointment once a year. Like that's usually how that goes. Like I'll call for my child, and then I'll somehow get an appointment and then I'll miss it because you know brain um but if, the, if 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 the if the goal was not how can I I even forgot my idea what was my idea brain roll interdependence accident oh when you said I have not made that call automatically my first thought was well it's because they don't have online bookings for them like I already have that for you like I want everyone to have that screen because it's not you who failed to do the thing it's the thing failed you Yes. Oh, right. Whoa. Okay. That feels really revolutionary too, because, okay, let's say new years, we don't participate. We don't opt into the system that says it's just individual me setting individual me goals about getting better. 
if instead we say, whoa, broken system harming me, I need something different from this system. If we collectively did that once a year and like railed against the system that's harming us, whoa, that would be a whole different new year, new year, new us, new year, new system. Like new year, new you is so, it's so limited. And, and it also actively keeps us in our place because we put so much energy into becoming different versions of ourselves that we aren't even asking, well, why is, why is it so hard to be the authentic me? About New Year's, New Us is you have to pick sometimes what is most important to you. So if you say, um, uh, in a parenting context, right? So like the relate safety comes first. I choose safety. I choose safety in this relationship as my priority. And you set that up on the pedestal that, that, it, that, that you're choosing for it. And everything else that's not that fades away. Mm -hmm. um, like sometimes people will come and they'll be like, well, I really just like this situation and like all the thing and they have put on the gas and they're like, I'm like, you have to pick. You have yeah. to pick. Only you can pick. I'm not going to pick for you, but you have to pick. And that's that. Uh, maybe the New Year's energy that says you have to be different than you are. You have to be better than you are. Maybe that New Year's energy, we could flip on its head and say, instead, there, there are trade-offs. And what if this was a moment to align with who you really are and in one small kaizen one tiny area of your life say this is what matters to me and then take a step on that action and instead of it being like a whole, a whole big thing that happens around New Year's time? What if it was a really itty bitty tiny thing, but that started something in motion for you that could build into something that you really need and want? And, you know, for me, in our family context, saying something like safety comes first, and then saying it out loud to my kids, hey, safety comes first. And then saying it to my partner, hey, remember, safety comes first. That that's actually a huge step for setting the trajectory of our year. And we can hold each other accountable to that. It, you know, Accountability is another piece of New Year's culture that comes up that can often be weaponized. Like accountability is sort of uh, like other people can tear you down if you're not that yeah when people are like how will we be accountable I'm like I hear the word accountable and I want to punch you yes. yes exactly because it's been harm it's been it's been used as an agent for harm but what you want it to be is to say I've made a choice I've made a hard trade-off and decided that something is more important to me and I'm going to be open about that because that is my that is me that aligns with my deep sense of self and, um, and in a culture of interdependence, I need your support. Yes. I, you're not keeping me accountable per se. It's, 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 I need your support to move one step closer toward this. Beautiful. Exactly. Exactly what it is. And then that could then unearth. And this is what's stopping me. This is what's getting in my way for taking that step. It's impairing my access and could you help me get that thing out of the way so that I can take my step? And what a, what a radically open posture to move into a new year with. This is me. This is what matters. I have this step and I'm blocked. Can you help me take my step? What do you do when it's the limbics. It's your own limbic system <laughs> that is obstructing you. And you have a habitual way of being in the world to say, you don't matter downstairs brain. 
Mm. Maybe the one step, this is where I love the concept of dropping demands. Maybe your one step isn't actually an addition. It's a subtraction. It's a saying, I'm going to let go. <laughs> what a beautiful New Year's resolution. What are you going to let go of this new year? What are you going to not do that is dysregulating your downstairs brain and giving you so much more to overcome to accomplish the things that do matter to you. So in order to make safety a top priority, I'm going to let go of this weekly trip to the grocery store that is deeply unsafe for everybody in our family. And it's causing like all of Sunday to be meltdown city. And I don't know how I'm going to replace it with food getting, but maybe it will involve asking a neighbor if we could team up for grocery shopping, or maybe it's going to be finding a person in the community who, who could go get it and bring it to us. Um, like change the system feels so big. Mm. So in many ways, I think a lot of the, a lot of, people in the ADD village who will be attending this brain club, I think it's like opting in to an environment that's safe Yeah, feels less big than like creating your own system or changing the system, even though like it feels like you want to, especially because for a lot of people, the environments that are unsafe are like the core environments of their lives. Like their family dynamic feels unsafe. Um, their work environment feels unsafe. Like that is when, when that's the case, downstairs brain is constantly going to be sending off the smoke alarms because that's its job. It's working very well. Yes coming back around to this is me this is that the goal isn't to become somebody whose smoke doesn't go off the goal is to listen to the smoke as meaningful about something that needs to change in the system and it doesn't have to be as you would say all the things it can be the one thing you can choose safety first and then you can choose one step towards safety um and and then invite in other people to help you access that safety in an interdependent way not you have to do it all by yourself and uh, figure out all the answers no you could maybe your job is just to be the one who says hey this doesn't actually feel safe to me and i'm prioritizing my own safety this year and so when environments don't feel safe, I'm generally going to opt out, but I want to stay. So what can we do so that I can stay? And maybe that's enough to change a meeting culture or change a dynamic in a partnership or at least to open up the conversation. Like that would be a radical new year step. Holy cow, I just had an epiphany. Ooh, what is it? So as a PDA or... I often resist like obligations and expectations on me to go do the thing. I don't ever resist like a meeting I want to participate in. Like I would never be like, damn it, it's 9 a.m. I got to go talk to Amanda. Like I, I, would, never, I would never have that thought. I would like want to do the thing. So it's also an element of like, of course, downstairs brain would put the brakes on if it's an unsafe activity. Ah, absolutely. Yes, it's giving you a signal that there's something you need to opt out of. It's saying unsafe, time to opt out. Yes. And that oh, meaning what? the thing that that's healthy. Mm -hmm. Healthy to opt out of things that are unsafe naming the thing as opposed to like ah because it's like it's that over rehearsed neural pathway of like quitting is bad avoiding is bad procrastinating is bad you're procrastinating because that activity is terrible yeah maybe you never ever want to do it like the thing is i never want to make that phone call mm -hmm. i never want to do it it's terrible 
it's it's uncomfortable it's um like also the thing i'm booking the appointment for that appointment's not going to be useful to me either huh. maybe this is your permission to to cross that off your list i think that's the healthcare appointment because unless i really want to like seek other health care which might be something that i might make time for but like it's just it is what it is but i think it's like you you have to get there by having the like the paradigm shift first mm -hmm. the paradigm shift of i am going to not do things that harm me yeah but the trade-off the trade-off comes like so if you are going to opt out of like your job like the trade-off is that you don't have income and you may not be able to make a plan for alternate income while you don't have access to your cortex uh-huh yes that's right it's like one of my kids was really struggling and then just was saying well i have to decide about this problem and i said you're not going to decide right now you're not in a deciding brain and and yet we we think that we're going to be able to do it all at the same time like i'm gonna i'm gonna make a plan and i'm going to opt out of this system that's on that's harmful to me and i'm going to tell everybody about the help i need no we i you can't actually do it. It's like literally impossible. And that's another system we get to opt out of that, that you're going to do it all and do it well, all at the same time, when in reality, downstairs brain is on fire. And so your whole brain is smoke logged. You can't do all the things but in interdependence what you can do is tell the truth to the people in your world and say i'm on fire right now and all i can see to do is opt out of this thing that matters to me but i need help because there's trade-offs and here's where it's gonna hurt can you help me sort out a plan for the next couple of weeks and so that i can put out my some of my fires and then i'd like you to help me think what what is next for me right when i have access when i have access to my upstairs brain we can do the work of planning and problem solving that is really about creating an interdependent community of authenticity and vulnerability and that's really new year new us so when you can recognize that, that an environment is not only not serving you, but harming you, and you resolve to leave it, that's game changer. Yeah. Okay, cool. Not about reimagining yourself. It's about reimagining the environments and routines of your life and opting out of them and opting into routines and values that are your authentic self and bringing that into relationships and saying, this is me and I'm gonna be me this year. Oh, okay. okay, so. So if you unshare, all right, perfect. Okay. Yeah, so how about that? I, I, I wonder, um, you know, I have, a, I have, there's a, a lot. Hi, Claire. Hi, Anna. Um, uh, I, I wonder, what does everyone think this year is going to be like for them? Or is there anything that you just heard that or maybe inviting some reconsiderations of like I don't know what am I going to do differently this year to 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 feel more like me. All right, Kelly says it's going to be a good year. I decided it. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. I could go, Mel. This is Christina. Yeah, do it. Um, <clears throat> so I think. Um, I really only like self-diagnosed as autistic like the summer when you guys had that, like just before the summer when you guys had that event. 
anyway, since then I've kind of been like really noticing what triggers my sensory issues and what triggers like, like responses in me that make me feel unsafe. And now I feel like I just have, now that I have the ability, I feel like it's okay to say no to like things that, um, so I think it's more going to be more of like, no, that doesn't work for me <laughs> this year, <laughs> which I, you know, maybe that's less, less stuff that I do. That's right. Maybe it's going to be less stuff that you do. And for that, and to like anticipate that and say like, you know, I'm predicting that if I'm going to opt out of more things, I might be doing less stuff um, because I'm opting out of it. And, or maybe it's my, it's like actually more authentic to be doing less stuff. Maybe that. Um, on New Year's Eve, someone brought up the, the fact that um, kind of once you kind of discover some things and start to show up in an unmasked state, it's like really hard to go back. And that is definitely my experience also of like, yeah, I, I, I sometimes it's I don't have the executive functioning skills to code switch to like show up in a just so way to accomplish my, you know, oblique angle, um, you know, that, that that's also true. But then sometimes it's like, I don't, I, I don't want to, I just don't want to, I'm just going to name the thing. And I only want to be in environments that feel safe around people who get it. I think that's what my 2023 is going to look like. there will be a lot of things I don't do anymore. reading in the chat, um, say no, and also say yes when people offer to help, um, which I've only recently let myself do. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah. Um, uh, Kelly says, yes, COVID allowed me to manipulate my environment a lot. Now I'm having a hard time masking. Yeah, you got some, you got a lot of, you got a yes, a lot of, a lot of yeses to that. And so I think it's about, I think I, I, if, you can't or don't want to go back. I think it's about, you know, like Amanda said, opting into the workflows and routines and environments that do make you feel safe and comfortable and authentic. And kind of refusing to settle when that's not there. And it's a, it's, I almost feel like the amount of privilege like it's such a privilege to be able to say yeah i'm just not going to do the things that are unsafe like that's i mean i that is a there's so much privilege in that um and it's not 100 percent um and it won't ever be and i still have more of those environments and have more autonomy than most other people and um one of the other topics that came up at on New Year's Eve is that an audience member shared that they've been working on like, like insulating, building safety from within, like some strategies around how do I actually feel safe in environments that I either can't leave or that I'm not choosing to leave? How do I help myself feel safe when it's challenged by choice? And I want to, I, I want to be in this. And it's really hard. I think it's about just transparency when possible. This is who I am. This is what I need. I don't know if any other people have, have thought about that. Um, yeah, the the uh, Christine is asking the chat what um, suggestions about what works for them to feel safe, um, and uh, they they talked about some visualization, like some kind of imagining. Um, some, this is a different person. Somebody else talked about like imagining like a bubble or like an energetic layer around them. Some people talked about like um, and and like kind of cortically thinking about like, I'm in it for this relationship or I'm in it for this other thing. And that was, and, and actually that was the topic that I put on that slide of, of reflection about. And I remember as a little kid being like, yeah, there are things that are like, you know, they're, they're, 
I'm kind of aware that they're not physically unsafe, but they're cognitively unsafe, but maybe there's something in it for me. Like maybe I'm going to do the thing because there's something on the other side of that, that I actually want. I'm not just enduring it. It's that I actually want that thing. And this is the only bridge that I know between me and the thing I want. Um, so somebody talked about something similar like to, to, to that. I don't know if, if, if others have anything to add. Um, but, but in the meantime, Kelly, Kelly shares in the shit. I, I shared at New Year's about finding a meme that spoke about realizing you're a zebra, not a strange horse. It suddenly made me flash through 46 years of seeing myself trying to fit into a horse costume and hiding when my stripes would show through the seams. And this year I shed the horse costume. Oh, thank, thank you, Sarah and Lizzie for re, re, reposting the, the, the uh, community ground rules. Um, and uh, Kelly's also adding, uh, I feel safe. I remember I can leave at any time. And I gave myself permission to leave. Yeah, I love that. Um, you know, I, and, and I think that, that strategy, I mean, even in, in my five-year-old, um, you know, she needs to know that she can leave at any given time. She needs to know that there's no expectation on her that like, you know, we're going there, we're going there with the purpose of watching the thing, observing the thing. You don't have to do anything. No one's expecting you to play or do or be. Um, and, and just naming that goes a long way, but it's gotta be real. You can't say it if it's not true. Cause there are lots of environments where people are expecting you to do the thing and be the thing. I'm um, reading the chat, Emily shares. Uh, I realized that um, I feel safest wearing jeans and a hoodie in my van. So I give myself permission to wear those as many places as possible, for example, including church, um, where the brain will say somewhere something nice, but I challenged that and said, why? Yeah, that is a great example of a brain rule of all of the, um, you know, it's interesting. Um, um, we're going to talk a little bit about this later in the month when we talk about life reimagined in the workplace. But, you know, he, now, now people work here. So we had to do like some of the world rule things, like having an employee handbook. And when we looked at like some samples, we're like, we're not having this. This is ridiculous. There's so many world rules. Um, and, you know, there's there are like some world rules of conduct, like violence, harassment, bullying. Okay, um, but the brain rules of like you you show this dress code and you do this stuff in this way, brain rules. Um, uh, and Chris, dress as a safety trigger. If I wear my cowboy boots, I feel invincible. When I lived in New York City, I used to, so I used to have a, it's kind of funny to think about, but uh, I, I used to live in New York City and I had like a suit and heels job um, for, for medical school. And when I wore my spike heels, I, I, I was, I was invincible. It was, it was definitely part of, I think there's so much about like costume and, and, um, you know, how you show up that, that goes, that, that goes a long way as long as it's authentic. You know, some people um, show up in in a certain way to present to the other to the to the outside world because it's it's they it's it's a it's a survival strategy. Um, I show up in this way because otherwise it's not safe. So that's that's there's there's all these different layers to that. What about for others? What's this year going to look like um, to be your authentic self in twenty twenty three? I asked Luna, Luna said, I'm not doing the thing in 2023. <laughs> That's my baby. Um, I think I, um, this year, uh, I think I've been in a practice of basically trying to figure out how I could fit in um, to the world. And so this year, I think because of like ABB community, like I feel like I have a place to fit in. And so this year it's like, I'm going to fit into my own life. So 
Um, so I think I've been neglecting like a lot of health things. And so this is like my year of health, but not from a place of like doing better, but actually paying attention to myself. So I think that's like the thing the I'm trying not to like be a better version or like, you know, uh, but I'm actually just trying to act, be there. So, um, so I'm wake, waking up in the morning, like five in the morning to go for a swim. And I'm getting so much dopamine in a way because I don't feel so compounded by the expectation I've put on myself to like be a good family member or be a good friend. And I'm just having the thought of like, if people want to come into my world, they can come into my world because I for so long have gone into their world and that world just was never safe for me. So I think that's kind of how I'm flipping it for myself this year. I love that. I am so proud of you. I mean, it's, it's, it's a long, hard journey of like unlearning decades of, a, of, of a narrative and in, or in the big scheme of things in a really short order time, think about, think about how far you've come already. Laura's adding in the chat. Um, one thing I've been working on is recognizing when I say yes, to something, I'm also saying no to something else. Like when I agree to go to an evening meeting for work, that means saying no to dinner with my family and tucking my kids into bed. Instead of telling myself I'm going to say no to more things, I'm telling myself I'm going to say yes to the things that really matter, which means that I'm willing to say no to make sure that happens. Joan says, I want to be more authentic on social media because others being authentic on those platforms has helped me and my family so much. Yeah. I want to use social media to serve others like others have by opening up and sharing. Oh, I love all of this. And, you know, social media is such an interesting phenomenon in 2022. This is how so many um, neurodivergent people find community and how so many late identified neurodivergent people like discover themselves in terms of reading things that other or listening to things that other people name. Like I remember when I first autistic, um, I remember like for the first time seeing like my innermost thoughts like articulated with great precision by a stranger in an infographic and being like what yeah that that mm -hmm. so I think that's awesome John I guess that means I'm going to be making more videos of my uncleaned toilet for social media in 2023 challenge accepted <laughs> Uh, Joan sharing. Yes, I was just diagnosed ADHD at 42 years old, and it was social media that helped me. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, one of the, um, the, the, the things that came up um, at, at New Year's Eve Brain Club was around, well, how do I tell the difference between um, uh, like what I'm anxious about and what's truly unsafe. What do you all think about that? I don't think there is a right answer. I'm just curious what people think. I don't know. I don't know how much difference there needs to be between that. You know, like if something's making you anxious, that is a trigger that it's unsafe for your nervous system. I think the next question is, can I work within this, this, this regulation? Can I stay within my own? Can I regulate myself and stay within my own zone of regulation if I do this? Or is it going to bring me out of that? And if it's going to bring you out of that, then it's unsafe. And <laughs> anxiety provoking. Totally. It's not worth it. I think it's also about like, do I want to be here? Like, 
do I want to be in this environment? Like you can be in environments like this, this, the, you know, in, in social situations, something can be stressful and anxiety provoking, but you still want to be there. You're not necessarily forced to be there. It doesn't feel good because nothing feels good per se. And it's like a lot of practice as, and I, you know, I, I know there's an out, I can leave, but like, I wanna, I, I, I wanna try this out longer. Um, that's, that's, I think, different than this environment is invalidating. The people in this environment are making me feel bad about myself, which is how many environments are for many people. In the chat, um, Kelly's saying, um, for me, it's fighting against the narrative that anxiety is irrational. Oh, let's come back to that. And I start fighting with me over, oh, people start, oh, I see, fighting the narrative um, uh, over being irrational instead of tending to the thing that is causing the anxiety. Like I'm mad at the symptom in place of the cause. Yeah, I mean, there is this oh, um, like over glorification, I think, of rationality. Brain rules are cognitive self-regulation. We make up narratives to make the world make sense. And if they serve you, you keep them. They don't have to be rational. And if they don't, you can choose to let them go. Um, and Sarah's adding, uh, this is um, uh, a relevant conversation having just come off the holidays around extended family. Yeah, I think that's true for, for, for many people, myself included. Um, Christina says, I think if I want to be there, I'm more likely to come up with tools and resources to help. If I don't want to be there, then I can't come up with those resources. Oh yeah, that's relevant for me for sure. Emily's sharing, there's a wonderful book called Avoiding Anxiety in Autistic Children. That book is on my shelf at the office. I have not read it yet. The author's autistic. These are books I love. Yes. Um, I found it helpful for both myself and my kids. I'm, I'm, I'm going to read it. Thank you, and thank you for sharing the link. Um, I just got a text from a colleague that feels super relevant, so I'm sharing 2023 motto. Um, I gotta click on it so I can see what it says. So it says, I'm pleased to announce that I'm no longer behind on everything. I didn't catch up. I just decided that where I am isn't behind. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. I'm gonna retweet that. Just retweeted that. Um, and a uh, uh, oh, book's name is a cart. Amazing, <laughs> great. <laughs> That's awesome. We could totally do a book club on that book if anyone's interested. Because I haven't ever like I read it, and I'm like, I want to discuss this with somebody. Yeah. And so yeah. So starting in February, we are going to start doing. I think it's going to be the fourth week of every month is going to be book club brain club. We'll put this on the list. We have some others ahead of it in the queue, but I think that'd be so cool. And so the cool thing about book club brain club is that no one has to read the book. You come anyway. Um, and so like, we'll have like video clips. We'll have like whatever we can find about the things that people want to read the book awesome but anyway it's a, it's like there's no right way to do book club namely you don't need to have engaged with the book like at all so um yeah by by request of our community advisory board i'm excited for book club green club <laughs> tuesday night makes me so happy so do that wasn't a sentence but you get the point all right <laughs> Yeah, uh, Laura sharing the idea of book club simultaneously makes me excited and stressed, right? Because of all of the lived experiences of being like, you will read that thing and you have failed to measure up to the right way to participate in your recreational activity. So it goes on. Um, so next next week at Brain Club, anybody remember what next week is? Let's look again and see what next week is. Um,
Home life reimagined. Home life reimagined. Um, uh, in in typical ABB style, we have not yet recruited our community panel. <laughs> But we're going to have a community panel on people who want to talk about how their uh, <laughs> how their how their lives are different since they've been unlearning and reimagining. Uh, uh, and 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 if anybody wants to be on the community panel, we would love that. <laughs> We've never recruited for free love and free love before. Twenty twenty three reimagined. <laughs> Every week we'll just recruit for the next week. You can just shoot me an email. Yep. It's amazing. Yeah. And um, as 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 if you're new to Brain Club, uh, uh, if anyone does what does want want to speak, it can be synchronously or asynchronously. We 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 love pre-recording videos. Um, um, anyway, we can do we can do all the thing if anybody wants to play. Um, reading in the chat, Emily says most book book clubs end up being about wine, which I don't drink, and gossip, which I don't enjoy, instead of the actual book. A different experience would be amazing. Yes. Yes, it was kind of interesting. Um, earlier this year, I gave a free talk for a local nonprofit um, as an early childhood group. And um, I it was supposed to be, they wanted me to do like a parenting talk. And I was like, I don't want to do a parenting talk because there's no right way to be a parent. And I was like, but they were like, but, but, but the people want to be told what to do. And I was like, I'll do book talk, except I'll just summarize the book. So I, I, I titled it you know, three parenting books you don't have time to read and now you don't have to. And I like just kind of like obliquely strewed some of the take home points. And I really just talked about neurodiversity and how there's no right way to be a baby or a parent. Um, and that's all I ever like to talk about. So anyway, um, but people, I mean, it was packed. It was so packed because people wanted to be told to do the thing. And they were maybe a little disappointed that I didn't tell them how to be a parent. Um, but like, it's amazing to me how many, how many books are like prescriptive about life. Whereas like, I, I, I just like reading people's story, he, like learning about people's stories and people's experiences. Like, so those, those are the books that we're going to engage in book club, brain club. Um, uh, Joan says, Amanda Diekman sharing her low demand home life on Instagram is saving me. Yeah, 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 yeah. We should, we should see if Amanda's free. That's a good idea. Yeah, Amanda, so Amanda presented at Brain Club, um, besides this asynchronous um, thing today, um, Amanda was a, a live presenter in November on Brain Club. That'd be, that'd be really cool. And maybe, actually, you know what? Maybe Amanda, if she's not free, um, we could, probably just we could just re, we we could include her she did a she was live in November Brain Club but there was a pre-recorded video that she also made with me we could I think we should use that I think that'd be great that's awesome um yeah run away from every any self-proclaimed parenting expert I agree Travis I told yeah I, I I totally agree yeah um, and uh, what, what, uh, before I learned I was autistic, I used to say that the only expert in parenting an autistic child was an autistic person. And then like when I received my autism diagnosis, I like for the first time allowed myself to parent intuitively. It was like, because I met my own brain rule. And which was like fascinating that it made that big a difference because I had this brain rule. Sarah, hi, Sarah. Hey, just uh. A quick thing on the um, prescriptive thing. There's a really interesting research study out there that was done by the Nursing Association or some uh, some nurse, nursing uh, international or National Nursing Association. And um, what they did is they they did it on pilots. They did it on beginning pilots, and they had um, expert pilots write instructions for beginning pilots to follow. And when the beginning pilots followed the expert instructions, they flew better. But then they had experts follow the expert instructions and they flew worse. So the, the conclusion basically was is that when you're new at something or you feel like you just overwhelmed or you don't know what to do, prescriptive stuff is really helpful. But once you start to gather some expertise, um, there's a whole variety of strategies in between prescriptive and 
just totally letting the person who has developed something into an art do their own thing because they'll do it way better than you can imagine. So anyway. That's amazing. That's really cool. So with that, thank you all so much for coming and we'll look forward to seeing you next Tuesday.